What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe. And today, we are talking about the thrilling conclusion to the Greenbone saga, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. Uh, Before we get into it, please consider hitting those subscribe and like buttons down below on YouTube. It helps us grow the channel and lets us know that you guys are interested in more content from us. You can also follow us on Twitter at Files Fantasy to keep up with what we're reading and talking about. Also, if you haven't listened to the audiobook versions of Jade City and Jade War yet, you should definitely enter our giveaway for the audiobooks. It's going on right now. Just click on the card in the top right corner of the screen or go over to our channel and click on the Green Bone giveaway video. Some episodes we have coming up include our end of the year wrap up where Gabe, Chris, and myself will all be talking about our favorite new to us favorite reads of uh, 2021 and just kind of looking back fondly on the year and all the amazing books that we were able to read this year. Besides that, we have Gabe's first pick for his books that he wants me to read, starting with the first two books in the Land series. And what will probably be in the first week of January or somewhere around then is the Wise Man's Fear episode. The, that's the second book in the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. Um, Chris is probably two or three weeks away from completing that right now. So definitely stay tuned for those. I'll also be doing my Wheel of Time reviews as I make my way through that series for the very first time, so definitely stick around for those. So I'm not going to split this episode into three parts like I did last time, uh, mostly because we'll probably only be covering favorite characters and favorite moments. I think that's where we're going to spend a lot of our time in this episode but if it goes too long i might just do like part one and part two um split it up somehow so so we'll see other than that let's talk about what we've been reading lately uh it hasn't been too much but yeah let's talk about a couple books real quick and then we'll go into our full spoiler discussion for jade legacy so Gabe, we read, um, or at least mostly read the the Black Prism, or no, not not the Black Prism. Uh, the second one, the Blinding Knife by yes. Brent Weeks, which is the second book in the Lightbringer series. I I think you got about three quarters of the way through, right? Yep. Yep. What What do you think of it so far? Man, I I really I really liked it. Um, it was. I don't know, just just a good continuation. You know, you, you they they set things out, and then you, like, I, I it wasn't what I was expected, but in a good way. It was like much more than I thought it was going to be, and continued on and learning more about Dazen and Gavin and that whole situation and what happens with them was really cool. And so I thought it was good, and I'm definitely going to finish it here in the next you know couple days. Right. Yeah. I I was completely floored with it. Um, and not to give away uh, a spoiler for our upcoming video, but I honestly think that it makes it into my top three for the year, especially the, so I, I got all the way to the end and the ending for that book is so, <laughs> it, I was not expecting what happened yeah, at all. I believe it. I totally and believe it. It's, it's so unbelievably like insane um i i really liked it a lot because i so i i liked the first book but i don't think it would have made like my top probably even my top 10 for the year um but i i liked it well enough but it it just didn't like hit me in that way and so going into the second book I'll, I'll be honest, it almost felt like it was kind of a chore to do so. I was like, yeah, I, I guess I'll read the second book. Um, but then the the first quarter of it is really slow. 
Yeah. And then once you get to that like 25% mark, all these things just start happening. That's like, oh my God. And it felt like (laughs) I I kind of got the same feeling um, that I got from Jade War. Yeah. When when just crazy thing after crazy thing after crazy thing just kept happening. And I was texting you like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my (laughs) God. Oh yep. my God. And just like one thing after another. And that's exactly what this book does. Um, and so I, I really, really liked it. And it brought out so many emotions in me. There was moments where I was angry. There was moments where I was laughing. There was moments where I was crying yep. and it, it just did all the right things for me. And it was so completely unexpected. I did not see it coming. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really, really loved reading that book. Yes. Um, I, I can't wait to, we'll, we'll probably have to do a, an episode on it in yep. January sometime, but, or maybe even February, it depends on, <laughs> depends yeah. on how much yeah. we have to read, For sure. but um, no, that was, that was a good time. And I cannot wait to uh, reread it and talk about it on the podcast. Yes. <clears throat> Um, other than that, I, I also have a video coming up for this pretty soon, but I've been reading the Mistborn Era 2 books. Um, I've read the first two of them, and then there's one more that I'm going to read uh, this week and then record a video for them um, uh, this weekend. But, oh my God, these books are are really good. It's like... It, so it's it doesn't do the same thing as the first Mistborn books do, where it's like this huge mystery, like this her, huge, like earth shattering mystery. Right. Yep. Um, and and in the end, it just feels like bigger than everybody. This is a much smaller story that feels like a like a Western, like a cowboy movie mixed with a Sherlock Holmes movie. Yeah. And it, man, it is really cool because you have your main characters are these guys named uh, Wax and Wayne and Wax is kind of like the main, main character. And then Wayne is like his, his sidekick. Um, And it's very, their dynamic is very much like a kind of a comical, uh, Sherlock and Watson is it yeah. is his sidekick I, Watson? I, I think so. I might put yeah. that. Sure <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Um, but yeah, that their relationship is very much like that, and it's it's a smaller story. So it's all the it's all the things that we saw in Mistborn, including um, you know, like the the Coloss the all, all these different like races and kind of political parties that we see they're still yep. there and the magic system is still the same the the events of the end of the first mistborn series kind of changed the way magic works a little bit but overall it's like the same thing Yep. And it it was just so much fun to like go back into this world oh, and, and okay. see how they're see how they're using magic differently. There's a ton of like new metals yep. that, that do different things. Oh, okay. Um that they can like uh they can like warp time a little Whoa. bit. And so yeah, there's there's some really, really cool stuff that they do uh with the new metals. That's um, awesome. So yeah, it's it's been it's been a ton of fun. I've really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed reading those. So I want to um, just really really yeah. quick. I have just a question about that. What? How much is the time difference? Do you know how much they skip forward? Three hundred years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, All right. awesome. Yeah. So like, if Mistborn was like a like fantasy medieval setting, yep. this is like the industrial revolution like the 17 or 1800s gotcha like you know uh coal power is just starting to become a thing trains are just starting to become a thing um automobiles are like just getting invented as these books are taking off so um yeah it's around that timeline gotcha gotcha really quick what so so we we read and i just i'm I, i think i get mixed up between lightbringer and this book but what was the book 
that I read that was kind of similar powers. Uh, oh, that that was Voice of War. Voice of War. Okay, so, so we have have we talked about that yet on the podcast? I'm glad you brought that up because we have not talked about that okay. yet. Okay. But um, we are definitely everybody. We're definitely going to do a yes. video on that. This yes. is a uh, self-published indie book by one of our friends from Twitter, uh, Zach Argyle. Um, it's a very good book. It's a oh, lot of so fun. Good. So it's good. it's kind of a smaller fantasy story that doesn't really take a lot of, um, you know, so, some of these big fantasy stories like Mistborn take a lot of energy and they take a lot of like yeah. critical thinking and stuff yeah. to kind of work your way through. And this book is just a really good book just to kind of hang back and listen to. And it kind of gives you all the information that you need to know and doesn't overload you. Yep. Um, and I, it's a really good book. But we have advanced, I guess, listener copies for the second book in the series. So we're going to do a video on Voice of War. And when that, when book two audiobook gets closer to releasing, we are going to have uh, Zach Argyle on the channel yep. and do a author interview with him. So definitely stay tuned for that because that's probably coming up in January or February. Yes. Uh, and then also, I don't know if I've Fish, I'm not going to go into it too deep, but I officially finished uh, Pines, the, the first book in the Wayward Pines series by Blake Crouch. And oh my God, man, the, the yeah. ending, the ending really landed for me. Yeah, it, it was a really, really good ending. Um, and yeah, I was I was floored by this. Did, did you end up did you end up listening to the audiobook at all? I have not. No. OK, yeah, I, I think the the ending was so perfect and it made sense and it it really stuck the landing um you know we've we've been so busy with reading uh jade legacy and and other things that i haven't been able to crack open the second book but i'm definitely doing that soon nice have have you been watching anything lately any tv shows or anything fun not really not really Movies? uh all right, so yes, I have seen, I've watched a couple movies. Uh, note the notable ones would be *Malignant*, and so we, I watched this prior when it very first came out on HBO Max, and it okay. was, it's such a mind fuck, dude. Yeah. Like it's so crazy, so crazy, <laughs> and so I was like, my girlfriend was like, we should watch it again just to get a feel for it again, and I watched it again, oh, wow. and it was even crazier, dude. It was cr so much crazier the second time. So highly recommended. So I, I think you said that this is a movie that probably wouldn't scare me too bad. It's more thriller suspense. More thriller. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, there's not really a whole lot of jump scares and stuff. It's more of a mind, mind bending kind of thriller where you like, okay, you know, you think of it as one way, but no matter what, like this is what I, the very first time I watched it, I even thought about this and I was like, there's nobody on the planet that could have guessed what was going to happen. Like it's like okay. that much of a twist. Um, and so it was super good. And I then other than that, it. yeah, you should watch it. Other than that, not not really anything, man. Watch some Gossip Girl and Disney movies and stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Um, and then on the reading front too, like I haven't, I haven't really read oh, you know, yeah. much much else of what of what we've. No, we've had. been we've been super busy. I, yeah, I haven't. For sure. I mean, besides like reading that Lightbringer book. Yeah. I don't even know how I read the Mistborn books in between <laughs> yeah. all this stuff. Like I literally yep. don't, I don't even know when I fit those in. I just remember sure. reading them. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but you know what I have been watching and so, so I, I've, I've watched up to episode five of the wheel of time show and I'm probably going to talk, I'm not going to go into it because I'm going to talk more about this in my upcoming Wheel of Time review thing, but I, I really do not like the show. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that yeah. I think that it's kind of a cash grab and, you know, they're the, the main problem the show is having is they are not trusting 
they are not trusting that the source material is good enough to be a show. Yeah. And in which case, like, why, why make a show? Like why, why make a show titled the wheel of time? If you're just going to make up your own story. For sure. yep. um, so I, I really think that they should have made it very clear from the beginning, like, this, you yeah. know, this is like based on Wheel of Time yeah. or in the world of Wheel of Time. Yep. Um, I think I think what they're doing right now is just making a lot of fans really mad. And and there's a lot of fans that really like it. You know, I don't want to I don't want to shit on anybody's parade. I, I know a lot of you guys are are really liking this show and that's fine. But I also know that the fandom is pretty divided right yeah. now on on who likes the show and and who doesn't but you know what i decided i i decided to stop watching at episode five and i'm like you know what i just finished book three so i literally have like 11 or 12 more books to read yeah yeah so i'm just gonna keep going with the source material sure. and yep. ignore the show because the source material is fire yeah yeah you got um, like a year and a half's worth left of reading exactly yeah, yeah no it it takes people like it takes people like a year or longer to, yeah. to read the books um so it in that i say all that to say that i was so upset with not liking the wheel of time because i was like oh i really wanted to have this fantasy show to watch um but i i get on google the other day and what do I find? But we're, we're recording this on December 7th. In 10 days, Witcher Season 2 comes out. Oh. Have you seen the show? I've, I've not seen enough of oh. it. I've watched like the first. And, and, and it wasn't because I didn't like it. I watched the first yeah. episode. And then I, I think in the, I was in the process of moving and like doing stuff okay. like that that kind of pulled me away from it. But I will absolutely start it again. And what's funny is that you just reminded me of that because I've been like, actually, I saw a, a, like an ad for it the other day. I don't know if it was yeah. for Witcher 2, but I just saw The Witcher yeah. on there. And then I remember the game and I was going to download the game again to play it again. So <laughs> Go ahead. So yeah, I've so I, I started watching The Witcher season one to catch up on everything by before the second season drops. Yeah. I and, and then and then I started playing the game again. Is yeah, what I'm getting yes. at. Is I, yes. I immediately I was like watching it and I'm like, I gotta play this game. And yes, so last dude. night I was listening to uh I think last night I was what was I listening to? I was listening to I, I think I was listening to a podcast or something. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to turn on The Witcher while I do this. And yep. I was just killing that griffin at the yeah. beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah. And it was oh, hard yeah, as dude. fuck. Yep. And I, yep. I died like eight times. <laughs> um, and then I finally killed that stupid bird. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it was, it was a great that, time. Dude. So I, I, I can't wait to hop back on that tonight. For but, sure, so yeah. I've, so I've been, I've been watching the show and... I so I watched it the first time when it very first came out and then I never really watched it. I never rewatched it. Um, and I, I remembered really liking it. But then I, I started it up this time and I was like, oh, damn, like this show was like really good. Yeah, like, it was like like it's like surprisingly good. And and so I, I was kind of floored when I when I was watching. I, I think I'm at episode three now. And I'm just like, man, this, this is a, a way better show than I gave it credit for. I think it's a way better show than some of the critics give it credit for. Um, and man, I, I, I'm just blown away from by it. And I can't, uh, I can't wait for season two. For sure. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into our spoiler discussion. So this this episode is going to be full spoilers for Jade Legacy. Um, if you have not read this book or the previous two, please pause this and go read it. This is a very, very special book that should not get spoiled. Yes. Um, so if you know if you're here for the spoilers, great. But if not, I would recommend pausing this and coming back 
when you've read it and participate in our giveaway. If you haven't read the first two, uh, now is a great time to do that. We still have, I think, three copies to give away. So uh, go check out our video on that. All right, spoilers in three, two, one, you've been warned. Um, so before we get too far into this, we met Fonda Lee the other day. <laughs> yes, yes, dude, in the flesh. Oh my God. In the flesh. Um, Here, let me, uh, hold, hold on, uh, go let, ahead. Me, let, let me, let me do this. So Spencer, yeah, yeah. maybe like a week, a week and a half ago, he sends me a text message and he's like, you have to have like call out of work. You have to have Sunday the 4th off. I need you Sunday the 4th. And I was like, okay. And he was so excited. He even texted me. He's like, I'm giggling with excitement about this yeah. thing. And I was so <laughs> curious. And I, in my head, I like, I knew it would be an event or something having to do with like fan fiction or whatever else. Uh, yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't sure. And so he picks me up or I meet him at his house. We drive to Seattle and we go to the, we're at the university, university bookstore. And yeah. so I knew that at that moment, I was like, what's going on here. And before we went inside, he gave me a present that had the new, a brand new copy of Jade Legacy and a couple other ones that we've you know that he's Dude, me there the was a signed of, a signed copy of, scythe. of the scythe series yeah exactly um and so whatever and we had we went in there and he went and talked to somebody and he's like i got we got to kill like half an hour he's like okay so we were looking around go back out to the truck do something and then he's like you ready let's go inside and when i was walking back into the university bookstore i was thinking hardly about this and i and i see you know i have this copy of jade legacy and i open the front door and fonda lee's sitting at the table down there like just sitting there and i was like dude no way dude no way it's insane <laughs> and, and so you can you can take it from there but it I, just the shock was like freaking awesome dude it was it was so great and and we were we were in line there was probably like I don't, there was like a group and then like three other people in front yeah. of us and we're we're sitting there in line and my heart is just like yeah, yeah, beating yeah, out too, of dude. my chest me too and i'm like oh my god like i <laughs> i knew this was happening and i'm yeah. like freaking <laughs> yeah, out dude. um and it was it was so cool it was it was just the best experience we yes. um and, and i've i've talked to her a little bit on twitter um and that's that's when she told me that she would be at the uh the bookstore yeah <laughs> but but she uh sh she meets so many people she meets yeah. like you know she's you know she nothing against self-published authors but she's not like a small author this is yeah. somebody who is signed by orbit books and is like she's one of like the newest most popular artists or yeah. authors right now and um you know she 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 was at comic-con this weekend so she's meeting hundreds of people uh there's probably hundreds of people she talks to in a week um and so i did not expect her to remember us yeah and i we're walking up the the guy the next guy leaves and we're walking up and, and i'm about to say like hey like we're we're the fantasy files podcast like i'm spencer and this is gabe or whatever and like introduce ourselves but as we're walking up she goes oh it's gabe and spencer and i'm just like yeah! i know dude mind blowing i was super surprised about that too i didn't think that would happen uh but it just goes to show that she you know if she's seen the stuff and likes it i, just, I don't know that's so cool yeah dude it it blew my mind i'm like yeah. oh my god she knows who we yeah. are <laughs> yeah. and uh and she signed she signed our books like um yep. like mine yeah, says for spencer far do your enemies flee mine uh, says, it's all like personalized dude, ahead, mine says oh, for sorry. gabe honor life and jade right at the top yeah Super awesome so that and it was just such a cool experience she was she was so awesome and so chill and she just has a way of like putting you at ease yes, and you know yes. we just we just kind of hung out she talked to us for like 10 or 15 yeah, minutes yeah and she, she talked to us about comic-con and about the book and what people thought of jade war we talked about we you know we told her we love jade war and um and then we took a picture with her and yeah. you know we we got to like 
just it was awesome it, it was, it was awesome cool, to, to be cool. able to get this picture with her and shake her hand it was yeah it was yep. surreal it was it really, was it was really really surreal um and i i was telling gabe as as we were leaving there um i'm like you know i i haven't met many famous people but the ones that i have you know have either been dicks like straight up just been a dick yep or they were just busy and they were like, let me just sign fast the thing and, and then and move on. Yeah. But uh, no, she was so personable, dude. Like we walked up and I felt it was, it was a very personal, intimate meeting and you could yeah. feel that, um, which is super cool. That's, that's probably what hit me the most, you know, having her know who we are is awesome, but she was like so down to earth and so willing to talk and communicate and, and wait, you know, cause she's got other people in line, but she's willing to just set that aside and say, here, I'm going to, focus on these people for a couple minutes and talk to them and see how they are and whatnot. So it was, yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's awesome. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and we were giggling the whole way home yeah. with excitement. <laughs> yeah. Like we yes. were, I, I think, uh, I think we were listening cause we hadn't quite completed Jade legacy up at, yep. on that day. But yeah, I was, on, and, I was on my end. I think, I think you were maybe done, but then I still had a couple hours. So we were, I, I, I definitely still had a few hours. Oh, too. okay. Gotcha. But, but I was just behind um, you, but still, yeah, we were listening to it. We're, we're listening to, to Jade legacy and throughout the whole time listening to it every now and then I just be like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah dude straight up like freaking out on the yep. way home like i yep. can't believe that just happened for real um but yeah that was that was a fantastic time yes um yes. i'm i'm really glad i got to surprise you with it because oh that was, dude you nailed that it was so I, like much I, fun like i said that was that was that's the best surprise i'll get all year i guarantee it i guarantee it it's like the best christmas present anybody could have gotten me Yes, it was absolutely. Super awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, she, she was great. Let's, let's talk about her, her book. How, so how would we rate these three having just read these so recently, all of them together? Yep. How, how would you rate these from like one to three? So I would, they would just stay right in line. I would rate. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, no, so I should say one in line backwards. The first right. would be the would be the last one. And they're all incredible. But I would say, yeah, one, two, three would be my my ordering because that the first one introduces you to so much. So awesome. Second one, you get your mind blown. And then the third one, it's like extra mind blowing. Like, you yeah. know, it's, it gets crazy. So I would just keep it right where it is. OK. Yeah, I think I think for me, um, it, and it, it's one of those things that's so difficult, like like trying to rank the uh, the Dresden Files books yeah. because I, I I love every single one of them. Yep. I think that the first one was good for me, but it didn't blow my mind. So that would probably be sitting at like the number yeah. three spot. Um, and then yep. I Jade Legacy and Jade War are really close for me, and I think. <sighs> I think that Jade War, I think I just like Jade War a little bit more just yeah. because this one was like a long book yeah, with explosive moments kind of every three or four hours, every maybe about the, even the five hours. Or the no, third the, or... this one. Okay. The Jade yeah, Legacy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and there, I think there was just a lot of time in between big events and Jade War was a little bit shorter. And all those crazy events that happened were like chapter after chapter after chapter. And yep. so I, I think for me, Jade War would be my number one. Gotcha. Jade Legacy would be my number two. And Jade City would be number gotcha. three. Yep. <clears throat> um, so what, you know, speaking of ranking, like what did you think about this book in general and how how do you kind of relate it to the second one like like what did you like in in this one compared to jade war so i think i think the jade war um does so much setting up for this book yeah like andin and hilo and you know all these people that just get set up and then jade legacy takes that setup and pounds it out, you know, it like right. pulls everything out. You, you get all the information and whatnot. And so, so I, you know, I, this book is awesome, but I think, 
I think that the setup is so crucial, obviously that's how books work, but um, the setup for like different people like Andon and, uh, and Hilo and, and when, and, and all these people uh, so good, but then seeing it finalized in the yeah. third book was super cool. So I like, I, I don't know if I could separate them, but, but I think that right. they both crucial, crucial points that they set up for each other and which is really cool. Something that's interesting about this book is right from the get go, we get the immediate fallout from yeah. Jade War. Yeah. Like yep. right from the first chapter, we're seeing, you know, Hilo is upset with Wen and Shay. Yeah. And and we're seeing all these things that have have kind of played out in between books. Um, and so I, I really like, you know this book just puts like a really nice, neat bow on, on everything that happened in, in Jade War. And, and of course, you know, that's, that's how books work. But I, I yeah. just think like right from the beginning of this book, we're already getting answers to what sure. happened in, in the last one. And I think yep. that's something I appreciated right from the first chapter. Yes. Also, so much happens in this book. Like there is, there is just, Oh, it's like an overload. It was, of dude. It was information it was hard, hard to follow sometimes, man. That's how yeah. much was going on. Right. And you know, even even getting to the end of this book, I was I was making the notes for this and I was trying to think like, okay, what do I want to talk about? And it it felt like it felt like the stuff that happened at the beginning of this book was like three books ago. Because yeah. it was it was so far removed from anything I had read yeah. recently, and so I actually uh, for for this episode we've pulled up like a timeline of of everything that's happened in this book to, yep. to help remind us. But the the point I'm getting to is so much happens in this book. There's no way we'll be able to hit everything, but we're gonna you know try to hit all the highlights of this book, um, and it'll probably be a lot of stuff from like the later half of the book but yeah. um, we'll, we'll try to hit all the major plot points. Um, what, one thing I loved about this book is how we, we really see all these characters grow old. Like by, by the end of the book, Hilo is probably late fifties or sixties. Yeah. And you know, his, his kids have grown up. I think, uh, I think Nico is getting close to 30 um Andon is probably in his 40s and yep. you know we we see this like we, we've watched this generation from beginning to end starting with the first book with uh Lan and Hilo and and Shay and their parents or their grandparents right yep. and and so then we see the older generation kind of die off by the end of the first book or maybe Maybe it was Jade War where the, the grandpa died, I forget. But, you know, we're, we're seeing this generation like really kind of turn over into, into the new generation. And that was something that not many books do, yeah. you know? Like most of the time, most of the time in a fantasy book, the events of a book will take place over a year, maybe, Yep. Um, and, and so it was quite a, quite, quite an undertaking to make a book series that spans like 50 or 60 years. For real. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely something that I've never seen done before. I, I think it has, I think it has its benefits and its downfalls. Yep. I, I was thinking right before the podcast, I was listening to some of the earlier chapters, um, and a lot of the stuff that happens at the beginning, it doesn't feel as like, I guess, gripping or like when things start to change a little bit, it doesn't feel as grounded because there is so much like time jumps. Yeah. So it's like all of a sudden uh, when or no. All of a sudden, uh, Shay and Woon are having like this affair kind yeah. of thing, and then like a couple chapters later, we've time jumped and they're getting married. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it, and it kind of just like explains that really quick, like, oh, like you know, Woon's wife came and like berated Shay, and then she left Woon, and then they got married. And it's like, 
oh, okay, I, I'm glad I'm glad that's happening. But it would have been nice to kind of sit with that for a while. But that's really my only my only complaint as far as that goes. I think that the time jumps it, instead of telling like this really short, intimate story, like something like uh, Voice of War for sure. or or any of the Lightbringer books, the Lightbringer books take place over like a month or two, maybe. And, you know, that, that's like a more tight knit, like close, closely um, more, more defined story, I guess. Um, but, but this book allows you to take a couple steps back and view this whole timeline yeah. and, and view all of these, all of these crazy events that are taking place over the course of everybody's entire life. For sure. Um, and so that, that was something new that I don't think I've, I've ever seen before. And another cool thing about this being such a, a large timeline is by the end of Jade Legacy, you kind of feel like, wow, we, we have come such a long way. Yeah. Like we, we feel like we've lived these people's lives. Uh, did you kind of have that feeling when you got to the end oh, of it and, and look back absolutely. on all the events? Well, just, just the amount of time that's jumped just, just in Jade Legacy, you know, there's point yeah. in times where it skips six years. You know, yeah. from one point to another, <laughs> and then eight years, and then all yeah. of a sudden, Hilo is like fifty-five, and uh, Aitmata is like sixty-five or whatever. You know, by the end yeah. of the thing, and it's it's wild, dude. I definitely felt felt the time jumps uh, pretty strongly, and and at first they were confusing. It, I had to go back and kind of like make sure that I knew the amount of time that went and kind of what happened. But once I knew that, you know, everything made sense and it was good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know by the end by the end of Jade Legacy, I was just looking back like, man, like this, it's just been so, th there's so much that has happened and so many events that have taken place that, that have to take place over yeah. the span of 30 to 50 years. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was really cool to see. I don't think I've really, you, I, you know, I've, I've had that feeling with series like at the end of the night angel trilogy or what was the other one I read recently uh, or, or even like the events of the Dresden files by, if you start at book one and get to where we're at now in battlegrounds, it's like, man, Harry has come a long way. Yeah, for um, sure. So it was, it was a similar feeling to, uh, to that. And, and another, another cool thing about the timeline is it's crazy to see how the world develops, you know, by at the beginning of uh, Jade, uh, no, at the beginning of Jade City, we, you know, they're using um, the uh, moon blades and talon knives, and they have phones in the houses, but they don't have cell phones. And by the end of Jade Legacy, we have like sniper rifles, we have machine guns, we have hand grenades, uh, Jaya has a cell phone. Yep. Um, and so it's, it's really cool to see all of this kind of progress from something that probably would have been like the 70s or 80s into the 2000s. Yep. So one last thing before we get into characters, I think something that's kind of funny is even though I had originally, or even though I had like doubted myself in the last episode we did, I was like, there's no way they're going to do that. Um, I ended up being right with my original prediction that I, and the, the mountain and no peak would work together to face yep. a larger enemy. They do this with um, GSI uh, to, to, kind of hit back at, at GSI there at the end when Hilo is taking down that helicopter and there's, there's that big crowd and there's people from the mountain clan and no peak in that big crowd that's kind of swarming onto GSI, uh, the landing pad or whatever that was. And then um, also Hilo goes and gets Ait's help to free his sister from the... Um, not the Espenians, the uh, the gang, the the Barokong gang, yeah. Baroton, Barokong, Barokong, yeah. And uh, so they they work together, and I think there was a couple other times they they work together in in smaller ways. 
Um, and so I was like, oh, interesting. That actually worked out. Oh, and, and Shay, Shay saves Ait yes, from the, yes. the bombing. The they, neck, yeah. they, they worked together to, um, to fight the clanless future movement. Yeah, uh, they they were definitely working together for like years in order to get rid of the clanless future movement. Yeah. Um, all right, should we talk about what happened to some of our characters in this oh, book? Oh yes, absolutely. What were uh, what were some of your favorite like character moments from this book? So I would say maybe not moments, but more in a general description. Anden was my favorite growth character and seeing oh. yes just i don't know I, I think i liked him the last book too a lot um but yeah. seeing you know he made the, the choice to like when, when he saved when and channel in where he realized he's like you know what i can change lives if i use this to channel medicine or whatever else and and help right. people and so seeing him you know do that and kind of go on and then he meets the the boyfriend and they live together and kind of doing their thing and he's part of the clan and he does these certain things for Hilo and whatnot I don't know. I just thought that that was really cool because because the last book, you know, he was like shunned. Like he was like, yeah, he was like apart at, at least until the end. But he was like apart from the clan. And so watching right. the watching kind of Hilo accept him back in and the clan letting him back in to do things and to help out was was pretty cool. And then, of course, so there's one. And then I, I really like when too, like seeing that she like finally recovered and got better and she could talk and do things and do all this yeah. was really cool. Um and then, dude, I liked all of them, man. I could keep talking. Yeah. Like the kids that grew up, like Nico and yes. Gaia, and like all of them, man. I could, yeah. There's no, there's no favorite. I like them all. I like them yeah. all. Yeah. What was your favorite Nico moment? Uh, probably when he, I would say when he became Pillar, and it would oh, be yeah. the moment when, when he started, like when his dad died, and he started like doing, cause, cause seeing, you know, Nico's kind of was kind of like a, uh how do I explain him? He's kind of like a stubborn, you know, got stubborn, gaudy teenager, right. Doing things and challenging people and this and that. Uh, and then when his dad dies, he has to like shape up, right. And like become the pillar of the clan and yeah. be all serious. And so I just like, I don't know. I like that those moments in the very end there where he became really serious and uh, yeah. was willing to talk to uh, the pillar, the pillar of the mountain clan and do all that stuff. I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think his uh, his growth as a character happened even earlier too. I think one of one of my favorite parts of the book was, um, you know, we'll talk about this more yeah. in detail in a second. But when when Rue dies, mm. and you know they they're standing there at at the grave, they're standing there at the tomb so, tombstone, uh, Hilo and Wen, and then all of a sudden. Nico shows up and he gets on his knees and he he begs to come back into the clan yeah and when like slaps him oh, okay yes yes and and you know Hilo Hilo accepts him back and and Nico is just becomes like this very serious um like hard-working green bone he puts he puts all his like you know, if he had any hobbies or anything, he puts everything to the side and he just focuses on work and that's all yeah. he does. And people even mention like, Hey, you're, you're working like all the time. Like you're yeah. not taking a break and he's just like going, going, going and becomes like this very serious stoic yeah. person. And little by little he's becoming lawn. Yeah. Yes, and yes. like he's he's becoming uh, exactly like Lon, um, and I I thought it was just so cool to see that that growth in him, even though it's like a little bit sad to see him become so uh, jaded. Um, <laughs> he he um, you know he's he's just becoming Lon. He's becoming this very serious pillar. He's becoming the thing that the clan really needs because Hilo is such a hothead and Hilo makes a lot of progress during his reign as pillar. But what the clan really needed was Nico. They needed somebody yeah. to be, you know, lawn. Yep. Um, 
And so I, I really appreciated that. And not only that, but he, he also doesn't have any of the, um, like the animosity towards the mountain clan because he didn't have to grow up, you know, Hilo has animosity towards the mountain clan because, you know, he believes they killed Lon. For sure. He, well, they've just know, done it wrong so many times. Yeah. You know? And so th- there's no way that Hilo could ever reconcile with yeah. the mountain clan. But by the end of Jade Legacy, we're like, okay, like we really need to reconcile with yeah. the mountain. And that's what Nico does. He kind of ushers in this new age of green bones. Um, and so I, I really, I really liked that. Um, I thought it was interesting how he, b- before he comes back to uh, KCON, he, you know, he has this time at GSI at, at a, what's it what, called? Can, 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 yeah, call, say, say that whole thing, because I'm, I'm curious. At a Gone Lu Solutions International. Okay. And um, he has this moment where, you know, he, he's all for being like a mercenary. He's off on his own. He's making money as a green bone. They appreciate his skills. Um, and Hilo has these uh, basically spies that he put into GSI to keep an eye on Nico yeah. that are from uh, that are from the no peak clan. And they're kind of posing as people who left the clan to then become GSI, just like Nico's doing. Um, and so him and one of these spies that he, he doesn't know is a spy are kind of, you know, they're watching for this truck that's coming by. And I, yep. I can't remember exactly what their mission was, but, um, you know, they're, they're told to open fire on these, uh, on, on this truck uh, because it's, you know, the enemy. Yep. And when they do, it's this whole family that they that Women they've just children. murdered yeah yeah and you know nico is just like what am i doing like what That's, am i doing here that was so powerful to me dude i mean it was like oh. it was like he, he he has this moment where he he says to the person it's like we have rules like we have rules where and the guy's like the the corporate doesn't want us to to turn this in like they, yeah. they, they don't want this on their face. Like, it's just not like, we're not going to tell anybody this is how this works. And that's when he finally realizes like, what did I do? Like, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I doing this? Um, and then of course we get him coming back and all the rest, but which ties yeah. into kind of what I talked about a little bit, but yeah. The, the thing that I think is interesting too is so he, he leaves GSI and then he uh, he does like all these odd jobs. He like travels around and like sees the world. He he goes to Steppenland because that was one of the things that he was yelling at Hilo about. He's like, I've never even seen like where I was born. Like I didn't yeah. know my parents or anything. And so he, I, I really like this part of the book where it's describing all this because he he goes to Steppenland and spends a little time there. And realizes like I I feel no connection to this place, and yeah. and that's when he realizes that he does feel a connection to John Loon and to the, yep. the Greenbone clans. Um, and so I think that was like a really powerful moment because, you know, e- even though I've never been through something exactly like that, I've had moments where I thought that I needed to move back home or I needed to go, you know, I needed to move back to this place where I'm yeah. from to like feel whole again. And then yep. I do. And I'm like, yeah, this it isn't really what I yeah. want. Yep. For sure. For sure. And so, uh, so yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that was a really, really powerful moment for him. Yes. Um, let's talk about, uh, since we're talking about Nico, let's talk about Rue. Um, I I really liked Rue both as a kid and a teenager and an adult. Um, he was kind of the, uh, you know, he was kind of unexpected in a way because he's a he's a stone eye. Yeah. And so you know, Hilo wasn't expecting him to 
you know, be anything important really, but he was like the most devoted son. He yep. was, he was the one who was always there trying to do things for the clan. Um, and he was like, you know, he, he was just always there. He was always respectful of his parents. He, you know, I'm, I'm sure he was the kid that like did all his homework on time. He was like the good son. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of interesting to see him grow up and, and Nico, this, this person who's supposed to be like the heir, like he's going to be the next pillar. And, and he ends up being the rebellious one and Rue being the stone eye who can never become pillar is the one who's more devoted than anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I just really, do you have anything to say about Rue? Not, not really. I mean, I just agree with everything you've said. It, it, you know, it's good. Rue is the one that chal- or uh, he tried to give a clean blade to somebody in a bar and gave him his car. Was that Rue? No, that Nico, that Nico, Nico gave the okay. kid the car. Okay. Then yeah, then I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> Rue is the one who, um, when, when he was older, he, uh, he's in a bar and he has this friend from college who's trying to introduce him to like other stone eye people. Um, and he goes to the bar and the girl hits on him and then they go into the back room and they're like oh, about to have sex. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then, and then Barrow shows up. He's like, yep. yo, you need to get out of here. Um, well, yeah. And, and, and then the, somebody from the mountain comes, right? It's, it's the, uh, the, the dude girl's that's, boyfriend. Yes. Okay. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? get the fuck out of here yeah okay i got you but yeah and and then it was i think so so yeah that was interesting because that guy comes in and he's about to kick rue's ass and rue's like i am the son of the pillar like you yeah. don't want to fight me yeah and and then the other guy trying to start a fight um is is barrow's friend i forget what his name is and and rue starts a fight with him and offers him a clean blade and the guy chooses uh fists yeah okay and so and so then they um so then they they fight and rue kicks the shit out of this yeah, guy yeah and doesn't stop and then at the very last second the guy pulls out rue's knife and cuts and him across stabs him throat. okay okay yep got you i just and, i think i mixed up the two the two sons for a second there but yeah right and i i i really like that scene too because we see this uh this mountain <clears throat> clan boy and he's like he he breaks like every single bone in this other guy's body the guy that hit him with the knife yep and um he he hands him over to he he kills the him clan, and hands him yeah. over to uh Hilo and then he also kills his girlfriend that started all the drama yeah. and hands yeah. her over to Hilo um and it was just this moment of like like I I had nothing to do with this but I witnessed everything that happened and yep. I I want to apologize and here are the people who are at fault here's their bodies um I, I just thought that was like a really good scene and yeah and just Rue dying in his funeral. And like I was uh, up until that point, I hadn't really teared up a lot. Yeah. Um, but Rue dying really, really made me tear up. For sure. For sure. Um, while we're on the subject of the kids, we, we also have Jaya. Yes. Who is the uh, stubborn, willful daughter. Um, she's kind of Hilo's favorite. You know, she's yeah. kind of like a, a daddy's She's a girl. badass, dude. She's a, she's badass. a badass. Big oh, time. Oh, man. There was, yeah. there was a couple times. Um, what's the, the scene, one uh, where she's at a party? That, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So so that one, too. So the scene where she's at a party and, and one of the dudes that she had maybe dated or had sex with or whatever else tried to, like, rape her, one of her friends. Yeah. And so Jai beat the fuck out of him. Like, beat him senseless. Uh, and then, of course, Hilo gets a call. She Jai's stabbed in him in the groin. Or, yeah, or, yeah, exactly. She <laughs> fucked him up bad. Um, and then Hilo gets a call, like, oh, Jai's in jail. He's all pissed off. And she try, you know, she explains it to him. She's like, what What did you want me to do? Like, he was going to rape my best friend. Like, I'm not yeah. going to fucking stand around when that shit happens. Like, no way. Um, yeah. And so that was super cool. And then towards the end, and it, I might need some help with this, but she she confronts uh, a member of the Barakon gangs, maybe, 
Okay, this yeah, the the six hand clan or whatever. Um, she she goes in to try and offer him, like you know, or like a piece maybe or something like that. Uh, and then he starts flirting on her really bad, like hitting on her, and she's like, "Do you like? Are you trying to like say you want to fuck me? Like, is that what's going on here? What not?" And he is is a dick, and he's like, "Yeah, I mean, of course. You got to use your assets. Like, you're pretty. You got to use your assets." And she's like, "Okay." And she leaves, calls up all her uh the the knife hands. And shoot it up. They fucking shot the place up, burned it down, whatever else, killed everybody in there. Uh, they she throw gets out. grenades inside. Yeah, yeah, dude, they destroyed <laughs> the place. Um, and, uh, you know, she comes out and she gets a call from her, or she calls her dad finally. She's like, Did you see me on TV? Yeah. She, that's all she was, that's all she cared about. Did you see me on TV? <laughs> and he was like, What the fuck? You scared the shit out of me. Like, you should have called me sooner or whatnot. And they keep yeah. going. And, and then he was like, I am proud of you. Like, you, you kicked ass. Like, you did a great yeah. job. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. She's and she's just fucking awesome, dude. She is awesome, and and even in front of the reporter, she she did such a great job. And it's even talking about how she she like walks out of this bar and everything is just exploding. And yeah. Shit. Yeah. And she's got like some ash on her face, and so she's in like the car mirror, and she's like <laughs> yeah. wiping up her face and like fixing her makeup, and she goes to one of her her uh friends from the little knives group yep. that they have and she's like does my hair look okay and like yeah. all this stuff and then she then then she goes over to the reporter to to be on the news and she's like we tried to offer them a deal yeah. and like just <laughs> yeah. just plays it yep. up yep. i i really i really like jaya yes um, i do too yeah i i wasn't sure where her character was gonna go or like what like what her deal was uh even halfway through the book but man yeah. she she really became a favorite of mine for sure um let's talk about where barrow ends up so this is weird yeah. right yeah super weird so so barrow is hired by the espenian government to spy on this uh clanless future movement um and so he he gathers this information and you know gives it to the espenian government but they don't do anything to stop this bombing yeah. they they don't they they sent like a a letter to hilo while okay, he was so, there so i want to do you think that that was them yeah it was it says okay it okay i missed that part but i was curious about that yeah because the the barrow's handler the the agent was like yeah, we we sent them a we sent them a oh, letter, okay. but they didn't okay. get out in time. Yeah, and and it's like, dude, no, you should have like shut the whole place down. Like you, for real, you wanted this bombing to happen for yep. your own gain. Like you Definitely. just killed like a ton of people. Yeah. Um, and and so that was that was interesting. That was kind of a, I don't know if I would call it a turning point for Barrel because. Barrow just ends up like a really sad person. Like yeah. the, the next time we see Barrow, uh, Nico goes and meets with him at that apartment um, to try to get some information on uh, Agent M or whatever the whatever the guy was that was um, that Barrow ran to right after the bombing. Yep. Um, and so I, I think Nico was trying to get information on him and Barrow's just like this sad old drunk person sitting in a apartment yeah. and Nico like offers him money and offers him. What else does he offer him? I think like a house or something. Yep. Um, and, uh, and you know barrow before nico leaves barrow tells nico that he was the one who killed lan and nico you know we we've kind of had this thing where there's been this big misconception around lan's death and nico finally comes in and says he doesn't like freak out on barrow or anything he says like very calmly he's like Lan was killed by his own demons and flaws and not the mountain clan and not you. Yeah. And it was like, okay, so the record is finally set straight. Like Nico knows that Lan died because 
you know, his father was using the original version of Shine. SN1, yep. And um, yeah, and so so it seems like it seems like Nico knows. He he knows it wasn't Barrow. He knows it wasn't the Mountain Clan. Um, and so that was that was kind of a cool moment. And then and that kind of goes along with what I'm saying. Like Nico doesn't have this grudge against the Mountain Clan. Yeah, like Hilo. Hilo wants to blame the Mountain Clan for killing Lon, but I, well, I've and, been call. Sorry, I've been calling oh, no, him Lan. No, <laughs> no, it's okay. It's Lon. Yeah, I, I I knew what you're talking about, but I just want to say with that, there's even a moment where where Nico, uh, you know, I think it's at towards the end of the book where he's approaching the new pillar of Mountain Clan, and he even says that in like maybe an inner monologue or something where he's like, you know, I. I haven't been affected like everybody else has with this because I didn't grow up in time with it or I didn't do this. And so, yeah, yeah. you're spot on. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that Hilo being such a violent individual wants to blame the mountain and yep. and wants to, like, put that on them. And even even when Andon tells Hilo, like, hey, like Lon was doing shine, like this is yeah. probably shine related. He was like, no, it's the mountain. Like we're gonna kill the mountain. Yep. Yep. And Nick or uh, yeah, Nico is very much like Lon, and he's like very kind of removed, and yeah. and he he kind of has this this moment with Barrow where I, I I just really liked it. He's like the mountain clan did not kill my father. Like yeah. he he died by his own hand. Um, and so it finally sets the record straight and kind of severs this violent relationship with the mountain. And it, it leaves Barrow to realize that he has not accomplished as much as he thought he did. Yeah. Um, however, at the end of the book, we still see Barrow is a, a cab driver and is in that very last like 10 minutes and he drives uh and into the twice lucky um and he's like man i could tell you some stories about the clan and like he's so he's still like so prideful and he's still so like consumed with what what he th like how important he thinks he is yeah oh yeah and you know him him trying to be important and not succeeding has just worn him away yeah, and yeah. and lowered him into this false pride like this this false sense of having accomplished all these great deeds it's like dude you haven't done anything like you yeah for real you're not as cool as you think you are yep, yep. um and so you know, be, before we stop talking about Barrow, I just want to say like, what a, so this is such a weird character for me because this whole time I've been thinking, okay, there's got to be a plan for Barrow. Yeah. Like there, there's got to be, you know, he's got to play into a much bigger way or a, a much bigger plan in some way. Like what, like, why was he a character? I, I don't understand. Like, not only was he a character, but he's like a point of view chapter. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess at the end of Jade Legacy, I was like, why, why did we need Barrow as a point of view character? I was just left kind of wondering, like, what, yeah. like, what did what did we get from him? Um, and we had talked a little bit on the last video about how he he showed us kind of like the underground that's, of, yeah, that's of the world. And say. Yep. yeah, I think, I think that's the main thing just to give us some other perspective besides the clans. Yep. And then, and then even that, and you know, in the, in Jade legacy or so in the, in the last book, you know, you see him and he's, you know, he, he murdered, well, kind of, kind of murders lawn, I guess, put, puts lawn in the situation where he's freaking out. Although right. it really was lawn cause he overdosed or whatever else. Um, and then he goes on thinking that he did do it and he finds all the shine. He's selling shine. He's got his jade. He's working out in these underground clubs to get stronger, yada, yada, yada. And then he gets jade stripped. Um, and then after that, of course, third book comes and you kind of see like where he leaves off with that. But it, it's still from an underground perspective because his mindset is all like illegal, like 
behind everybody's back. Like, how can I survive doing this shit, right? Like, that's this whole thing. Um, and so I would just say that, I mean, it, at least for me, I, I still got some of that, like, other perspective that was, like, not the not the clans, not the mountain, you know, not the law, like, this other kind of backbone of, like, you know, the underground stuff going. And then, of course, when he gets, you know, hired hired to spy and whatnot that's kind of I also that's also kind of underground too you know that's all yeah. like kind of behind the scenes stuff so I, I can understand you know the behind the scenes things but i guess you're right like where where he ended up is is not really what i thought it would be i guess or kind of yeah. a little confusing stuff like it that was, it was really sad honestly i was kind of yeah. hoping that he would have some sort of redemption arc um or something but yep all right, so let's let's go on to it. Let's do a couple more characters. Uh, what did you think of how Andon's relationship status ended up? Did you like his new boyfriend or no? I so I I don't want to say that I liked his new boyfriend because I I liked Corey in the sense he was kind of like uh you know kind of like the bad boy like that whole thing you know I can see how that would be appealing to Andon uh, yeah. his first sexual experience you know all that stuff is pretty can be pretty powerful. Uh, and when he ended up, do you know the guy's name? Cause I forgot his name. Yeruya. Yeruya. Okay. So when he ended up with that, honestly, at the end, I was happy for him. Cause like, huh. I think that, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it, it was what he was looking for. Like he, he wanted to be in a relationship with somebody and that was who he picked out. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say about that. I was happy for him. It was a little weird. Um, I, but, but, I but think... towards the, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, you're good. You're good. I, I think that um, Jeruya just didn't do a lot for me because I, yeah. I feel like I, I just feel like he didn't have much of a personality. Yeah. And he didn't have a lot to offer. Like he wasn't right. like he was there's no status that he had and whatnot. But I think that Andon was happy. And that's what yeah. that's what mattered to me the most was that he finally found somebody that n not only him willing to accept, but the clan, you know, Hilo accepted him. And like yeah. knew what was going on and whatnot, which to me is pretty powerful because like, you know, he, he's a, he's a queer kid in a in, in a place where that's supposed to be really unlucky, right? Like that's yeah. not it's not a good thing. And the clan was willing to accept his boyfriend, bring him in. Yeah. I thought was pretty cool. The the one thing that sucks about that though is even though the clan accepts the boyfriend, the boyfriend didn't want anything to do with that's the clan. True. Really, like yep. he didn't want to go true. to clan events and yeah. stuff. And I'm just like, and then like, why, why would you pick somebody who doesn't want to be part of like your bigger family? Yeah. Um, I, I guess I was really hoping that he would end up with uh, Lot because mm. um, the, the guy who ends up being the, yeah. the horn. Yep. Because, you know, in, in that first book, they're in school together and Andon is kind of talking about how he always gets this feeling like maybe Lo is flirting with him a little yeah. bit, like maybe yep. there's something there. Um, and even at the end of the book, I don't think, I don't think Lo got married or anything. I don't know. I I'll, I'll be honest, thinking about Lo, like I, I did not peg him ever as homosexual. I never oh, got really? the vibe. Yeah. I mean, I remember what you're talking about, the point. And, and I, I could have missed something important you know, reading the book, but I, I never really got the vibe that he would ever go the homosexual route. Yeah. I, I, I definitely see what you're saying. Cause it's not mentioned a lot. It was yeah. like, literally, it was literally just one or two times in that first book where Andon is like, you know, like he, he has like a huge crush on Lot for a while. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then he's like, I think that Lot might be gay. Um, yeah. And so I, you know, I, I thought that maybe in the end, Andon and him would finally get together because I, I felt like Lot was a lot like uh, Corey in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah. And so I'm like, man, that would be cool if he if he ended up with Lot. But yeah, I thought I just thought Jeruya was weird. Yeah, yeah, it's an odd choice. definitely definitely a little weird. I would agree. <laughs> um, speaking of Lot, I I really don't have that much to say about him. But I, I really liked Lo in this book. Yeah. I, I thought he, he's like rising through the ranks. And, and then um, that one guy steps down and is like, I want to hand the position to Lo. Uh, 
Um, and Lowe's like, what? Like you want me to be horn? Yeah. And I, I just think that Lowe was like a really good horn. Like, cause, cause yeah. he, he steps up to that position, maybe halfway or three quarters of the way through the book. Yep. And ever since he becomes horn, he is just like on top of it. Like he oh, is always sure. there. Yes. He is yes. always by Hilo's side. Um, you know, if, if anything bad is going on, he's like, and even before he became horn, he was a really, really good first fist. Yeah. Um, like even when Nico and Rue sneak away to go watch that duel. Do you remember yep. that? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and they're like, they're like running and like trying to get back home and low, like cruises up in a, in a car and he's like, get your asses in the car. Yep, like, yep. what are you guys doing out here? Like, you should not be watching this duel. And, and so he's like, I, I just felt like he was so dependable and yeah. he was just always there and always ready. Um, and then I think it, it's also interesting kind of his, the, the difference between him and Andon, because at the beginning of, um, at the beginning of Jade City, and then was being primed to become either a fist or horn someday. Um, and, and Lo didn't want anything to do with it. He wanted to work like in the clan, but outside the, yeah. the violent, like ranked kind of yep. Yep. area. And so it's funny for their places to switch and and then to work outside the clan and for Lot to become the horn, like they kind sure. of just crossed over and switched. Um, also, another smaller standout character for me was uh, Vin, the sniper. Do, do you remember this guy much? Not, he, I'll he be had, honest, not, not really. <laughs> he, he had like the crazy perception, like he, he could see like really, oh, or like sense okay. things really far. Yep. And when, when they were uh, going to get Shay back and she was in the tub, yeah. he was like the first one that took that shot. Okay. Yeah. And, and they were like across the street and he like, oh, he like stretched, stretched his uh, perception as far as he could possibly go. And he saw the guy who was like about to hurt Shay. Yep. And that's when he pulled the trigger and like okay. shot him in the head. Yeah. And I, I just really, he was, he was only in the book like a handful of times, but yep. I just thought that was a really cool idea to have like a designated sniper character. Yeah, like his, dude. his weapon of choice is the sniper rifle. Yeah. And he has like this crazy perception that helps him like that's what you want in your sniper you want them to have like a crazy For long sure. range perception yep um and so i i just thought he was a really cool character um before we move on let's just talk about a couple of the more main characters um in between books hilo has been off the rails a little bit he hates his home life uh, he's banging these uh, these escorts over at the what is that the the golden the gilded lily or whatever. Yes, um, yeah. And uh, and and he's he's got major problems with and uh, let's, when let's, and Shay. Yeah, and I was gonna say let's just preface that really quick. Of course, he's super pissed about when and Shay going behind his back. But I think what I noticed more was that he was more upset about the fact that he like lost his wife, pretty much, right? Like at this point. You know, when yeah. is like non-functional. She can walk, she can talk, but it's super hard for her to put sentences together. You know, they, they can't make love. You know, they can't do things like this. And so I got the feeling that that was more, of course he's pissed, but I yeah. think that that was more of his like issue kind of, you know, like I, you know, they did this dumb shit behind my back and now my wife's gone pretty much. Right. Not gone, but, you know, damaged, you know, yeah, stuff like that. So definitely. And I, I think it's also this, um, this perfect storm. I, I, right before we hopped on the podcast, I was listening to an earlier chapter where th this thing happened to her, where she basically died and had to get revived. Right. Yep. And yep. then during that time, like when all that happened at, at the same time, Hilo found out about what, what her, when and Shay were doing behind his back. And so yeah. he's pissed, but she is like non-functional. Like she, yeah. 
she can't really, like you said, form sentences and, and talk very well. And so at this critical moment where, you know, the, this time that she needs most to talk to her husband and tell him exactly what happened and, and why she did the things that she did, she literally can't like she yeah. literally like cannot form the words in order to tell him and you know whether it's to make excuses for herself or to apologize she has none of those opportunities because she physically can't yeah. um and so it's kind of this perfect storm of him being upset about them going behind his back and him feeling like he doesn't have a wife anymore but also when not being able to apologize and not being able to communicate and yeah. and tell him the things that she needs to tell him um and i you know it, i i i think i missed that on my first read through but when i was listening to it tonight i was like yeah that that really makes a lot of sense like imagine you know, imagine doing something against someone in your own family uh, and whatever you did made it so your vocal cords don't work. And at this critical point in your life where you need to like explain yourself and need to, you know, just explain the circumstances and apologize, you can't. And so yeah, imagine yeah. how much that person's anger towards you would grow and grow, not For having sure. an apology, not yeah. having an explanation. It's just a, a perfect shitstorm. Absolutely. That's a great way to describe it. Perfect shitstorm. <laughs> Hilo. Um, so Hilo, Hilo goes into like a downward spiral of depression when Rue dies. And it, it well, was kind does of... It, th th does it start, as, start when Rue dies or does it start when his wife's all messed up? Would well, you think that it would start there? And then, of course, Rue dying is super bad. But I feel like I see the spiral way before that when he's, you know, I can see the aggression starting and this starting okay. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I, I think that Rue dying completely because because what when Rue died, he was like not involved at yeah. all. Like he he was not involved in any sort of way with the clan he wasn't going to the like the clan meetings anymore yep. he wasn't involved in any of the politics he was just completely vacant yeah um you know at at dinner he would be super quiet uh wouldn't say anything and just nobody could get him to get back in gear but when nico came back um over the next like several months that when nico first came back I, I thought it was cool how it kind of it like jump started him into like being him again because you know they they say there's um there's kind of a saying in construction and I'm sure many other trades, but you know, when you think you've learned it all, the best way to progress yourself is to teach someone else. And, and so I think Hilo doing that for uh, Nico did the same thing, like having to train Nico and go back through the basics and tra training him to be a, a leader and training him to be pillar someday. Like that really jump started his love for the clan again, yeah. I feel like. Yep. Um, and so I, I think that was really cool. We see him we see him just become a better man in general. He's becoming more active in politics, getting Jade legalized. He's donating to charities. He shows up to the big protest with uh, GSI and takes down that helicopter at like 55 years old. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was a really, a really cool arc for him. And, and then of course, Hilo dying um that was so sad that was that was when i texted you uh i think I know. yesterday i knew exactly when, when when i read the moment i knew that exactly what that text was about oh, god yeah, dude. i like tears were like literally like streaming down my face mm -hmm. and i was yep. just like oh my god and it, and it kind of goes back to 
it, it goes back to this big timeline, right? Like we, we have spent so much time with these characters, even though it's only been three books, we feel like we've known them their entire lives. Yeah. And, and then, you know, when Hilo sacrifices himself, he, he puts, he throws a deflection at uh, Shay and Nico because he knows that he has to save the pillar, that that's the yeah. future of the clan. Yep, yep. And, you know, he, he saves uh, Ait Otto, someone from the mountain yeah. clan. Because well, and, the, and at that time, he's the pillar, right? Isn't yeah. That, okay, yeah. Ait Otto is the new pillar, yep, yeah. Yep. And so, you know, Hilo has this moment where he's like, I have to save the new generation. Yeah. And, and, and saves them with a deflection um and and takes these bullets and then of course all the other green bones come in and and kill the insurgents um and i I think one of the saddest moments is andon is channeling for hours into Hilo. like he's putting everything he has he's like channeling into Hilo to to get him to uh heal up in any sort of way and it gives Hilo these like final moments where where he gets to say goodbye to his family and i'm so glad that uh fonda lee did that because i i would have you know it, it would have been even more sad to have Hilo go out in an explosion or something you know we For get sure. to have we get to have these final moments and it feels like you as a reader are you know having these final moments to say goodbye to this character yep. um and yeah, that was just, that was a really, really amazing couple chapters. Sure. Um, and, and of course this, this huge gathering is, is outside and the, the gates have been opened wide and all these people are coming in and they're chanting like the clan is my blood. The pillar is its yes. master. Um, and that just had me like, I was, yeah, I know I just tears were just like streaming yep. down my face. Yep. Um, yeah, that was that was an incredible way to to end this book, uh, to have to have this generation kind of go out because um, a- everybody's dead except for Shay and Wen of the yep. original group. Yep. Um, and so you know, and then and then when that happens, uh, Wen is like in a in a state of mourning and and even up to now she has not accepted nico back and yeah. she she's like really upset with him still and she like hardly ever talks to him and when hilo dies she comes back inside and just hugs nico and they yeah. and they cry together yeah. and it's like wow that's that's going to bring them back together um and For so sure. I, I thought that was a really, really fantastic moment. Yes. Um, what did you think of just Shay? Like what just kind of her her years throughout this book? What did you think of her arc? Yeah, so I, I, I thought that she grew well, um, at least as the weatherman per se. Yeah. Cause, you know, she she had was not really exiled, but she left and was gone for so long, came back, tried, you know, got reintroduced into the clan and whatnot. Um, and so I guess seeing here, and, and then the weird, this, this is the first thing that pops up in my head about Shay, is when she kissed Juan Papi Duan. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like the first thing when I think about Shay, that's what comes into my head is that scene where she, it was so, so really, so Hilo like confronts her and, and he's like, are you going to tell him how you feel? Like, yeah. are you going to like be honest about this? And she's like, what the, what are you talking about? Like, what? Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on here. And then of course she finally does it and they kiss and Juan's like, dude, I have a wife. Like you back the fuck up. Like I have a yeah. wife. Like I can't be doing this. I love you so much, but I can't do this. And then yeah. of course, you know how, you know, four chapters later, they're getting married and having kids. Like, it's like, holy yeah. crap, dude. <laughs> I don't know. It was just, it was just fast. That was really fast for me. Yeah. And I I think, you know, the, that very first scene where they, they start making out, uh, you know, the author did such a good job of making it like 
just as they're super conflicted. Yeah. I, as the reader was super conflicted and I I felt all these really conflicting emotions because, uh, Woon wasn't really someone that I was rooting for as yeah, far me too. as, me too. Uh, you know, a, a partner for Shay. Yep. Um, and then of course he's married and he's trying to have a kid and stuff. Um, and so it was like these conflicting emotions of like, Oh, I, I didn't really see them together. And, and also like he's, he's married he's he's had a wife since jade war yeah um and so what they're doing is super like messed up but also i'm like i kind of like it you know like when when they when they first kissed i was like oh shit (laughs) yeah dude you know yeah i know part of me there like i said there was so many conflicting emotions but one of them was good for them yeah, you know? for sure. And, for sure. And, uh, another part of me was like, don't do it. Yeah. But then, I, <laughs> yeah. then I thought about it and I'm like, well, there's not a lot to ruin, you know, like he's, yeah. he's got a wife, but they don't have kids and yeah. his wife isn't somebody that we know very well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm like, okay, so are these people going to end up together? And then the wife comes and calls out Shay. Yeah. And she's like, I, I want you to know that he didn't leave me. Like I'm leaving him. Like you can have yeah. him. Yeah. And it was like this moment where I was like, Ooh, like, uh, dude, I know. All right. Know. Like, let's yeah. do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. I guess. <laughs> yeah, dude. And, and, and I want to put, uh, throw my perspective at that first scene yeah. uh, where they kiss and I, you know, and I'm, you may have been too. So do a lot of people that I'm sure listen to this have been cheated on before in the past. Yeah. And so when that first happened, I was like, just like, oh, dude, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, you yeah. can't do that to your wife, even if even if like she's a shitty person or whatever, because, again, we don't know a lot about her. Right. And so I was I like struggle with that really bad, really bad. Yep. And then when that the con- the confronting came and happened, I realized like, OK, she was probably bound to leave this dude like they weren't going to last very long. Like she made it, you know, she, she she made it her own in the sense of like, no, I'm in control here. I'm yeah. leaving him. You're not doing it. And so I felt better after that. But for a while there, I was just like kind of falling my fists up. I was like, dude, man, you can't do shit like that. But yeah, I think that's what made the scene so good though. Right. Like that's what yeah. made it so much more powerful uh, in the end. Definitely. And I, I think the, the interesting thing about um, the, the thing that kind of ties this whole thing together when, when the wife comes in and, and tells Shay, she's going to leave him you know, we, from the very first book, we have seen, uh, Woon has like this big crush on, on Shay and he's been in love with her for a long time. And so even before they kissed and like had this little affair, um, the, the wife was always upset that Woon would, at the drop of a hat, go and help Shay. The Shay, yeah, for and sure. And even if it was the middle of the night, he'd be like, I'm on my way. And he'd always yeah. like pick up, he'd pick up Shay's calls in the middle of dinner with his wife and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And so she knew that Woon was like really in love with Shay, yeah. but couldn't yeah. have her. Um, and so it was this really interesting moment for all of that to come to a head and the wife basically being like okay well if you are interested in him then i'm just gonna leave him because you know he's been in love with you forever and he is like he is not being a good husband to me because he's in love with you for sure um and so i I just thought that was a really interesting way to tie it all together and and here's here's something that is so cool about these books you know, the these books do not follow any standard fantasy tropes. Yeah. The the people in these books feel like real people. Yep. Like everything from their flaws to the little like the very like realistic ways that they are flawed. Yeah. Are, you know, because we we have other fantasy books where the characters are are fairly realistic, but I think 
what's what's realistic about this is the stuff that you don't expect like the stuff yeah. that you don't think about like like Woon being a bad husband to his wife because he's in love with Shay. Like I, that's just yep. such a, it's such a small detail that yeah. really like nails the not world building, but just nails the, the reality of, of sure. these characters. And I, I yep. think that was just done really, really well. Yes. All right, we are running a little long, so we're going to split this into two parts um, just so we don't have like a three hour episode posted on YouTube. So be sure to join us in our next installment of the discussion of Jade Legacy. Be sure to like and subscribe down below, and you can also follow us on Twitter at Files Fantasy for more fantasy related content from us. Um, also be sure to check out our Greenbone Saga giveaway to win a free audiobook copy of either Jade City or Jade War that's going on right now. We still have copies left to give away, so be sure to get in on that. We'll see you on the next episode discussing the rest of Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee.